Bhagavad Gita, verse 2.39 O son of Partha, thus far I have explained this knowledge of Sankhya Yoga, but now I will impart to you knowledge pertaining to the science of Bhakti Yoga, by which you will become freed from bondage to this material world. Sar Ardavarshini At this point, Bhagavan Sri Krishna says, Until now I have instructed you in spiritual realization through transcendental knowledge, Jnana Yoga. I am concluding my instructions on Jnana Yoga with this verse beginning with the word Esha. That which properly illuminates the nature of an object is called Sankhya, complete knowledge. That intelligence with which you must act has been explained here by the word Esha. Now, hear about the intelligence required to act for spiritual realization through loving devotion, Bhakti Yoga. Sri Krishna's statement, in which he uses the word Yaya, explains that when a person is endowed with intelligence related to bhakti, he will become freed from bondage to this material world. Sar Ardavarshini Prakajikariti Here, Sri Krishna is concluding his explanation of yoga through the principle of analysis, or Sankhya Yoga, and is beginning his instructions on Buddhi Yoga, or Bhakti Yoga. Srila Chakavarti Thakur defines Sankhya Yoga as follows. That which properly illuminates the nature, tattva, of an object is called Sankhya Yoga. Sankhya Yoga gives complete knowledge about the Atma, soul, and Anatma, inert matter. From the verse Natva Evam, Gita 2.12, to Dehi Nityam, Gita 2.30, various facets of the science of the soul have been explained. And from Svadharmam Api, Chakeksya, Gita 2.31, to Sukha Dukhe, Gita 2.38, knowledge of the science of what is not related to the soul in the form of occupational duty, has been explained. When a person performs selfless action, fixing his intelligence on that which is related to bhakti, he becomes free from the bondage of action. In other words, his bondage to the illusionary material world is destroyed. This conclusion is verified in Sri Ishopanishad 1.1. Ishavasya idam sarvam yat kinja jagatyam jagat tena jagtena bunjitama gridaha kasya svitdanam. Everything moving and non moving in the entire universe is pervaded and enjoyed by Parameshwara the Supreme Controller. All moving and non-moving objects in this world are to be enjoyed only by Parameshwara, the sole enjoyer of this world. The Jivas are the servants of Bhagavan. They should engage in service to him, using the universe as an instrument, and they should maintain their lives by accepting his remnants. The supreme duty of the Jiva is to render loving service to Sri Bhagavan by using his property, being devoid of a desire to accept that property as the object of their own enjoyment. In this way, the Jivas do not become bound by their actions. Sri Ishopanishad 1.2 One may aspire to live for hundreds of years if he continuously goes on working in that way. For that sort of work will not bind him to the law of action. There is no alternative to this for man.